lines them up better, but I feel like I've seen it so many times. When you're getting beat by a team badly, even a better draft just isn't enough. Like, you have all the tools necessary, but you're not a mechanic. So you can't fix it. I'm hoping that they make their, their changes, though. I'd love to see a game three, and I, I think they're, like I said, it, it's certainly in a great spot to do so. Yeah, it, it feels like last game, the the adjustment that Dogchamp has made this time, right, is that they don't want to get outpaced. So they have very right. quick heroes themselves as well, very mid-game oriented with Viper, Pugna, Tyne. All five heroes actually are very mid-game oriented, whereas four Zoomers, they can also fight around that time, uh, but they also ne don't necessarily mind slowing the game down a little bit either. I think their scaling possibilities with, um, with even a four Weaver are pretty promising. Um, but both teams can definitely also take it late. So yeah, I, I think this is pretty even overall strategically. Like you said, Dog Champ were just totally outclassed in game one, so uh, not necessarily too hopeful for them. But let's see if they can pick up pick up the pace a little bit. Now, BSJ brought it up. I gotta ask, do you do you ever role play heroes? Like you're you're getting in. He said he needs to role play being a snake to play Viper, a sneaky slithery snake. Do you ever get into that? mindset on any of these heroes uh yes uh let me just find which one i do it on so i can make a joke about it uh monkey king <laughs> i role play him every day also when okay. i'm not playing it well that's method acting or method dota <laughs> definitely uh i've seen some players get away with that <laughs> we just need a clown hero then uh <laughs> now we've got one for that's quite a few pro players that like to be clowny, and then they can roleplay that one. Well, mid lane, uh, this was one I was curious to see because I think, theoretically speaking, this should be a horrible lane for Tusk. So I'm um, curious how it actually does play out in reality. I don't think I've seen this lane played ever in, I don't know how many games of Dota I've played, but Tusk versus Viper 1v1 mid. Curious about it. Um, there's this new build with the 15 minute shard that some Tusks will go for in the core position where they just get the shard ASAP and. As it's in the name, it upgrades your shards. So it gives the, the ice shards a, uh, a damage over time effect and makes the area that the shards cover deeper. So you can actually farm full creep waves with this spell and, and get pretty uh, pretty big. So I think Gunner is going to go that route. We'll see how, um, how it goes. It'll be interesting to see if the Tusk, you know, they were talking about the Ags for the Walrus Kick, uh -oh. which I've seen be utilized pretty well. Bottom lane, though. They're trying to go after oh. him. He's got the tombstone down in a TP with six health. Yikes. Care to elaborate? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a nasty lane combo on level two. Eesh. It was a lot of damage really quickly, but yep. six health was uh, was the bottom line. That's what he needed to survive. Yeah, and as Dragon Knight gets higher levels, this will be harder and harder, uh, I think, for their lane to handle. So this was one of their biggest opportunities to find that kill. Uh, when DK gets level 3, probably gets 2 in Dragon Blood, and then you're likely surviving a lot of the extra Tombstone damage, and you're likely surviving a lot more of the primary damage output of Tiny. I don't imagine a carry Tiny in this game uh, will not prioritize Tree Throw. I don't think we're going to see him go like 4-4-1, four, four, which you can do in mid in some games. You need to keep that scaling going, so he'll probably max out Tree Throw, and that doesn't synergize very well or counter very well into Dragon Blood. So, good attempt, but it wasn't quite enough. But at the very least, compared to last game, I think they're off to a much better laning stage already, Dog Champ. Uh, all three lanes are actually going pretty well for them. Yeah. So, better conditions. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm paying attention to see what this Viper ends up doing. We saw Viper a couple times mid in the Chinese region, and I know from Black's point of view, he said two in poison attack is all you need. Getting yep. anything more, it feels like you're just going to fall behind and farm. It's not going to allow you to really escalate this early advantage that you should have. Yarn getting run down now under the tower. Just to be like trying to get this and will secure first blood diving under that tier one. Well, I think that's a fair point uh, about Viper is you don't want to overexpose yourself into poison attacks so that you don't have the nether toxin to farm stacks. Luki trying for the kill on Husky won't get it. Um, yeah, so if I Annihilate goes, I think 2-2, two, two, maybe even 2-2-2 two, two, two build and then ult on level 6, obviously. Uh, maybe that's what you do. It's not exactly one of my most played heroes, the Viper, but I, I would imagine the nether toxin is really good value for keeping that high farm, farming speed up with more than just one point. For value. 
because uh, I, I believe in that last game that I saw it in China, it, it went four points in the poison attack, had a great early start, but then the farm just couldn't keep up. Mm. And eventually as a Viper, it felt like he fell off very hard. Meanwhile, Gunner getting run down. Yarn in here trying to get some help from I Annihilate. Will deny the bounty rune while he makes this chase. And I Annihilate will go back to the lane to continue farming. He's actually on 302, at least for the moment. Yeah. I uh I don't know how much that's gonna change the dynamic of the lane. That's the whole point, right? Like you're doing this oh, I think they're okay bot. Good damage, but stone bag should be safe. Sticks. Um I don't know if you, how much how much extra pressure you exert by going three in poison attack versus how much farm you lose, right? Because if he ends up in a position where he's not hitting Gunner a lot anyway, it's just wasted skill points in a sense. Whereas the Nether Toxin right. will always be valuable because there will always be creeps. So, um, yeah, at least so far so good, right? Like we can criticize the build if we want, but he is crushing mid. He's twenty-five and nine against fourteen for three. So going as expected, very much in the Viper's favor. Gunner isn't really getting close to any creeps, so gotta wonder what made them choose to opt for this idea of putting the Tusk mid instead of offlane and getting a better mid matchup. Um, they will refill his bottle with Bane. I'll help him a little bit. No, they, they don't refill. They want to go for I Annihilate. They've got the Snowball coming in. They have Z Freak over, and that is a pretty big kill for them to get to slow down this Viper. And he's, uh, I go back to, and I really don't want to harp on it or repeat, repeat it too much, but again, now you've died. Gunner gets a little bit more out of his lane and his time early. You've got no nether toxin to kind of make up the time right. lost, right? Yeah, you're, you're still ahead though. So I think Gunner will still need additional help, but that was definitely a, a very important move for them. They they get an eight out of 10 on execution though, since they didn't refill the bottle when Bane TP'd in. If he didn't TP from base, that obviously wasn't an option. I didn't notice where he TP'd from, but uh, probably didn't do that. <laughs> Otherwise, Gunner could have stayed in lane and this kill would have been a lot more impactful, right? Because now, yeah, you get the kill, but essentially Viper's death timer is equalized by your own running back to base. So you didn't get that experience advantage outside of the kill. And that should mean that Ion Isle is still in a good spot in the lane. Uh, sitting at a comfortable 600 net worth over the tusk, even though he died. We'll need extra help rupture. Has rupture. Yeah, yeah Luki, Luki. Who gets the disarm? Just keep disarming him. Sure it's gonna One happen. more, baby. One but more. All right, no. <laughs> One more. <laughs> he got stupidly lucky there. You see him laughing. <laughs> like, okay, dude. <laughs> if he had got a third oh, one, he might have actually me. killed him with shield crash. Another rotation mid, though. This, this one stings more than the first one, I think, because. For this one, you TP back into lane, so you're still dead for a few seconds after you respawn, and now you've got to be feeling the pressure of, uh-oh, is the Tusk actually catching up so much that he can start making moves on the map after I trashed him in lane? Yeah, and and that's certainly, you know, Walrus Punch isn't exactly the longest cooldown you snowball shard Walrus Punch into a lot of these heroes early on, and, and you might just have the damage to kill pretty much anybody around the map, especially if you've got the help of Z-Freak coming around as mobile as he is. Yep, he's grabbing the urn from this kill, so really wants to get involved in the next one. Also closing in on level five, which is a, a pretty meaningful level for support Weaver, actually. Um, after the nerf to Shikuchi, every single point in this matters more than ever. So the cooldown is really Bottom long. Lane. They want to go for stone bank. They have the walrus punch. They're looking for the kill, but they have the rotations to try and save the tiny. Gunner goes down the urn, and now they will go for it. Moo. Both of them might have been a little bit too overextended. The courier also just stationary in the lane. If anybody wants to pick that one up, as uh, Mu oh, the looks like he's gonna find his way out just in the fog, avoiding that soul rip that was coming in from this undying bunny nine. Almost was able to get the kill. He'll get the courier that was staying stationary in the lane instead. And now again, Mu trying to go in. He's got the dragon tail. He'll have the damage to get the kill on the yarn and the brief fire, I believe, hit bunny nine as well. Gunner comes in. He's got the snowball back into the fight for the second time, and it ends up being a double kill for Mu. Bog coming in clutch. Yeah, and Bloody Nine also started a TP there, so he died one and a half times because now he can't TP out to a lane to help. He has to walk as that five undying. Has boots at least, so it doesn't take as long, but it's a pretty major loss. And while all of this is happening, while all this pressure is being put bottom and mid by the four zoomers, the big winner right now is Costa Bile, who's 2-0, and has 60 CS, just free farming in the top lane in a favorable matchup against Pango. Um, it's tough because 
Luki will need help up here. Every single time he gets ruptured, he has to TP to base, basically. Right. If there's And if there's any plus one, he's just going to get killed, potentially. Um, so Costa Vila's got to be feeling really good about his chances in this game to just get out of control. Looking at a nine-minute Maelstrom with treads. Very good time. And they want to go for Luki Luki again. They want to make sure that they can shut down this Pangolier. They've got Husky coming over. He throws down the ward. He's looking for the vision. Now he's got the nightmare. They'll have the blood right down. They'll go to the rupture. And like you said, he's just got a TP out, but uh, it doesn't matter. And pretty much every plus one, except for the Weaver, is going to give you the ability to make sure that his TP is never going to happen. Seven for one. And they're just going to... I, I think this is kind of um I don't know if there's a bit of a mental block for this team in this matchup because I think in this game Dog Champ definitely do have some tools to fight, right? But they haven't quite managed to connect the pango to the fights that he would thrive in, right? He's zero two and zero, he's level seven, but definitely get involved elsewhere. They will get Moo here. So that's one rotation that is successful for once. Uh, Tombstone Viper Strike, Moo by himself, but again, he's second on the net worth. He's opening up more space for this Bloodseeker who is just flying in the net worth. Oh, Luki so again. Coming through, he just cannot catch a break. Fiend's Grip even comes out from Husky. They're still trying to keep him alive, but they've got the Walrus Punch and then the follow up of that Brain Sap to get the kill there out onto the Pangolier. Buddy Nine comes over, Costa Bile. Use that pig pole to get away. Not really get away. He was pretty slow as a pig as well, which, I mean, is more realistic. Well, speaking of uh, role playing as heroes, then uh, pig pole might be a another source of inspiration. Definitely. If you're picking up pig pole, you I have no have idea what was going with Some that slop to the side. Uh, Z freak trying to steal some of the stack here. Well, I think he Ooh. got a little bit of it. And at the very least, he's carrying experience. Yeah, we got the courier too. Oh, he's actually stealing sizable chunks of this. This is going to feel really good as Costa Vila at the same time. We'll kill off I Annihilate bottom with the help of Moo and Husky. And I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like this Viper's kind of fallen into that trap, right? Four poison attack, one in the nether toxin, and he's killed three times. You want to play aggressive, but your team is already feeling like it's fallen a bit behind where maybe that aggression can't even happen at the moment. I think he's just very dependent on playing with the Pango, I think. So the only catches that the Viper has to ensure that the enemy team stays in place and he can get his damage out are the Pango or the Tiny. But the Tiny wants to farm since he's position one. He's not going to make a lot of moves. And we just haven't seen Luki combine with his team yet. He's still got zero assist min at 12 on Pango, which I think shows one of two things. Either they haven't played around him or he hasn't played around them. At the very least, they haven't played together. And here we go. Finally, going to be finding an opening top. Should lead to a kill on Gunner here as they're yeah. collapsing on him with four heroes. It's going to take four heroes to get that done, and they will get the kill on a Gunner. They'll parlay it into a tier one top. So that's, that's a sizable amount of gold. But mid, now they're going to look over at I Annihilate again. Him and Wookie Wookie seem to be the target of four Zoomers' wrath as they get the kill there on the I Annihilate. They've got the ulti in from Yaren to get the kill on the Husky. And now Costa Bile needs to be careful on whether or not he wants to continue for more or just continue to run. He does have move over to the side, does not have that Elder Dragon form for 40 seconds, and he doesn't have a rupture for 50. I Annihilate going down, it feels like they are really following Luki Luki and I Annihilate all over the map at the moment. Trying to slow down their game, maybe thinking they can handle the Tiny later on. Yeah, the silver lining is, at the very least compared to last game, Dog Champ feel like they have more of a grip on the map, right? They traded one yeah. tower for one tower. At this point in the last game, they were down seven or 8,000 gold in three tier ones. So this one feels playable, but the gap between Bloodseeker and Tiny is very concerning. Like, this is not how this is supposed to look from a theoretical standpoint in this game with the drafts. Uh, but Four Zoomers just outplayed them, and Costa Billy is. It, it's a really big chunk to be 2k ahead of the other carry minute 13. So if he can keep riding that momentum and get the BKB, we can start looking at a Bloodseeker that if the team just gets some meaningful damage out to begin with, like the Swarm, Breathe Fire, a little bit of damage here and there, he can just rampage them. Stone Bank, and he's going to try and survive this 3v1, but the Snowball pulling everybody in for the moment, and they've got the shards placed perfectly, so Stone Bank now 
will die and lose even more time trying to catch up to Costa Viola, who has this freedom of space all over the map, it seems like. There's nobody here to stop him bottom because everybody's over towards top. Wookie Wookie looking for the Rolling Thunder, but here comes the Fiend's Grave. Doesn't care that he's getting life trained by Yarin. They'll still get that kill onto the Pangolier. They'll look to get Moo out with the TP. Okay. It's it's kills, it's space, it's everything that you need. And here comes this Bloodseeker to get involved and get a kill on a Bloody Nine. So he'll even get himself some more injection of gold and look for another taste of it as he'll go after I Annihilate, who's standing there trying to get help from Yarn. The life drain is not looking like it's going to be enough to save this Viper. Now that the shards are kind of on the mark, they'll look over at Yarn. They'll chase down this Bugna. Life drain again on the gunner, but the breathe fire is there from Moo to take out a plus one. And I say plus one, but it was like plus five. Hey, four Zoomer is just not stopping, and Wookie Wookie looking again for this Rolling Thunder. Oh, he is uh, making sure that the R button on his keyboard works repetitively, and it does. Yes. And then ultimately decides that probably the best way to get those CS was with another spell, and he will. But yeah, he's set up. Nobody to play with, though. Tiny is farming in the jungle, so he wants to use the Rolling Thunder, but can't connect on anything. And Stone Bank. This is something Z Freak, I've noticed, as a player, does more than other fours. I think he really tries to just steal experience from the carries. Whenever they're at stacks, like this is also turning into a bit of a pressure attempt where they force a rotation. But uh, same in the enemy triangle earlier. Z Freak's just lurking around on that Weaver, leeching half the experience away from the enemy carry. It's super annoying, even though you know you get all the gold. Like, you really want that. You want that progression on your hero. And as a result, Z Freak is actually level 10. He's out leveling the enemy tiny as Weaver 4. Uh, pretty unheard of how far ahead they are in experience, as a matter of fact, on the dire side right now. Yeah, Z Freak giving me Jin vibes. He does the same thing where he'll try to be as greedy as possible while playing in the most precarious of positions and find himself as high a level as the position one on the other team, especially when you see LGD and how much they can crush a team down. It's just sometimes I would say Shinku does make the wrong item choices or maybe tries too hard to be a carry from that position. Sea Freak right now, though, he's got the spirit vessel, keeping it all what he needs in the utility at the moment. Yeah, it's a good vessel game. It's a great item against Tiny, Viper, and Pugna, and Undying. So very, very much multi-purpose. And it also lines up nicely with the fighting timing of the enemy lineup, which you shouldn't underestimate the value of. Like, if the enemy team really wants to fight into you, it feels extra good to have Vessel because you know you're getting those charges from all the skirmishes that are going to happen. This mid-tower will fall now. Dragon, whatever it's called, Corrosive Breath, I think it's called, was on the tower from the attack. And that will grab Mu a nice bonus. He's got himself a pretty significant net worth as well. Not buying Shard and Gunner. I have to say I'm a little bit surprised. I thought he was going to go uh, take that route in this game as a mid-Tusk that had a hard laning stage. It's a good way to get a catch-up mechanic going, um, but maybe it doesn't feel like it's necessary. I mean, he would be right to think that, but that doesn't mean it's not still worth getting it, even if it's not necessary to win the game. Um, yeah, heading towards the Ag, so he'll try to get that Walrus kick, and I think that... At least when I've seen it against Lifestealer is uh, while Tiny up top trying to get a kill on a Z Freak and will find it. It's you're looking for that initial opportunity, right? So for Tiny, it's going to be coming out of the Shadow Blade and trying to get the Echo Saber Avalanche Toss combo. But Tiny, who's there, uh, Tusk, who's got the blink, can blink in, kick away, and have a little bit more control on that carry. Meanwhile, Fiend's Grip top, Luki Luki gets killed off, and Stone Bank going to try and TP out. They have nothing to stop it at the moment. Yeah, obviously the Tusk Eggs is amazing this game together with the Rupture, right? It, it definitely makes sense to oh, yeah. get the item, but I I wonder how much later you would get it if you bought the Shard first, if you catch my drift. Like, I think you actually get a significant mm -hmm. amount of gold as Tusk by buying Shard and just pushing waves. And it's a very safe farm because you don't need to expose yourself. One of Tusk's weakness as a carry is that if you... Well, I guess he has Blink, so he could Snowball plus Shard the waves, but it still feels like a nice efficiency upgrade. Um, but anyway, might just remember remain an idea and never be put into place in this game. So, uh-oh, Bloody Nine in a horrible position, but they don't know he's alone. z Freak's gonna scout it out though, he's dead. There's no way they let this guy go. Trying to TP, but here comes Gunner with the Walrus Punch knockout blow. Care to elaborate? Really well done there. To find that solo roaming undying and get the kill and then they get the top tier one so <laughs> more gold injection for four zoomers oh 
Hang on. Rupture used, blood right down. They've got the Rolling Thunder coming out from him. Luki Luki to try and save by Annihilate. Garen's here too, but everybody from Four Zoomers is showing up. The Rolling Thunder is disrupting the fight, but not disrupting it enough just yet. They've got the disarm on a gunner, but once he's back in a punching shape, he'll punch Drunk Yarn into his death. They look over now at Stonebank, who's made the TP in. They've got the Nightmare out onto the Pangalooka. Luki Luki in trouble as he goes down to Gunner. Husky ends up falling, but it's just the Bane for now. Looking for that Avalanche that does lock down Costa Bile for the moment. Stonebank, Bloody Nine, both here. Moo inside the trees and will eventually be spotted. But it looks like four Zoomers might even be ready and willing to go back in if they do find Dog Champ coming out a bit too far. They're not going to give them the opportunity, though, so they're going to back off. And another great... Another great overall victory there for four Zoomers. Like, they exchange a little bit of heroes, but clearly favoring them, and they get to show off the value of this Bloodseeker BKB for the first time. Um, just overpowering the Viper, right? That's not what you want to see as I Annihilate here, is that there's a guy who's actually just not scared of you, right? So we're going to have the replay here. Rupture, they get the blood right off, and Costa is going to pop BKB. He was thinking twice about this with the Viper, and then swaps over to him. I'm not sure if he was decrypt at the time. He might have been... Um, Gunner having a good time. Understandable. This is an important game for them to win, and they're crushing it, so... It's got to feel nice in a... You've had a hard tournament. You're one and four. You played against all the Giants early on in your schedule. So, you're in the back of your mind, you probably know, okay, we're still going to be favored to stay in the division, but it's got to be relieving to, to get the Ws in, and in this case, it looks like it might very well happen soon. Yeah, they're trying to get the kill on I Annihilate once again. He's been decrepified, but that's not going to last long enough for them to keep this Viper alive. They find a second in Yarn as Mu and Kostabile will get themselves each a kill. Wookie Wookie trying to use this Rolling Thunder, but eventually it will run out. Will the Blink get him enough distance? The TP in from Gunner trying to keep up with the Pangalier, but now they've got Mu coming in from the other side. So they'll pincer him in and kill off the Pango once again. Now they're looking for high fives with each other, looking like OG a little bit. Uh, why, why is Husky's emote for Care to Elaborate Cat Jam with a hoodwink? <laughs> How does that make any sense? Oh, yeah, that's a dead tiny and maybe a dead a dying off screen as well. Oh boy, yeah, it's not going to be just one. It's looking to be two chasing in on a bloody nine, but Z Freak finally out of giving charges. it up. Yeah, not enough juice he had another charge. He goes for it. Yeah, probably. And uh, even though that fails, it, it's kind of similar to game one. It, it's better from Dog Champ, but again, it's just it's four Zoomers dictating the pace of every single move on the map. They're the ones initiating. They're the ones connecting the spells. Dog Champ seem very disconnected and not playing very tight as a team in these moves. It's a lot of individual, seemingly kind of erratic and random movements that they're making instead of coordinated, like team smokes or. Uh, well orchestrated ganks or combined spells where they set up their Viper for success, for example. I think I Annihilate now will finally be approaching a BKB, but it feels like it's five to six minutes too late with the state the game is in. And I wonder if he can even stand his ground with that. He could just get murdered by the Tusk plus Bloodseeker. Almost just those two alone and just go on him and kill him. So, tough times. Yeah, certainly feeling like Dog Champ are kind of on five different paths hoping that eventually they'll meet at a, at a central location. Uh, whereas for Zoomers, every move seems very calculated. Every move seems like a hive mind. They know where they all want to be, where they all want to go. And and, and Dog Champ, like you said, it, it just feels like they're flustered after that laning stage because they did have an advantage on it. And then it really fell away quite quickly. Well. Uh -huh. Smoke's gonna break here. Ward and Tombstone. This could be good for Dog Champ, actually. Yeah, they're gonna try and make something happen here as the Blood Rite is down, but it doesn't land on anybody. They'll go to the Dragon Tail coming out from Moo as well as the Fireball down to the ground. They get the kill to Husky. They'll look for more of the shards trying to keep them back, but they've got the Disarm, the Life Drain trying to get the kill out on a Moo. They'll stop the TP. They'll finish off the DK. So two kills for them. And nothing in return for four Zoomers this time, the first time in a long time. 3k gold swing. That's pretty. That's a pretty major fight to get. Like, okay, that's actually not 3k, but they were 10k ahead a moment ago. I swear I saw it. Uh oh. Well, it now there's a return like kill. 10k. Oh, that is a... BKB on the run, and like you said, it just doesn't feel like it's effective. Yeah, that, that's kind of the dream scenario for Dog Champ to fight there. They get an observer out, they break the smoke, and then they put a high ground tombstone, and 
for Zuma's lineup doesn't deal with that high ground tombstone at all. The only hero that can hit it is Weaver, and it's just not going to happen. Boy, Coast to Vila coming in, looking to go after Wuki Wuki. One right click afterwards, after the blood right is enough to get the kill on the Pangolier. They're evacuating the pit. They got the kill on the Bloody Nine. Is Gunner comes in with this snowball, and Stonebank will fall to Gunner too. Yarin trying to stand his ground with the life drain, but it won't matter. Everybody dead on the side of Dog Champ. And uh, I guess Roche is on the side of Dog Champ too, because he's dead in a second as well. Yeah, they got themselves a win in that fight, and then Viper stays top to push out one wave too many, gets killed, and then they also try to rush at the same time with four heroes with Zoomers respawning. It's one of those moments where if they're a bit clutcher as a team, if they want to go for the rush, the call is made immediately after they get the two kills in the fight, then they go into the pit, try to take it, and either they force buybacks or they get the rush. Uh, but like this half and half, they essentially just hand over everything to four Zoomers. They give them the kills, the Roche, and all the map control back once again. So everything they did just manage with that Tombstone fight was all for naught. And now we're back to a really tough game state for them where four Zoomers with an Aegis on this Bloodseeker, he can play super aggressively, just needs to get any key rupture out that they can kick, and then that will start the fight off with their first kill. So you're going to maybe see that here. I annihilate. If he oh. doesn't BKB, well, it doesn't matter, actually. Oh, boy. Look at that damage. He's oh, well. <laughs> into the Fiend's Grip. That, that is pinballed all the way around. You may not want to look like RTZ, but you're here doing it forcefully on that cliff. They get the kill on the gunner, though, so it ends up being a two-for-one trade at the moment. They'll toss up into the air this Bloodseeker, but, well, they've got the stun. They're looking for the right clicks. The life train is there. Quick to really trying to man fight this tiny. They've got the spirit vessel on him. They've disarmed the weaver. They go after Luki Luki. He's the focus of their aggression now as they'll let the tiny live. They've bought back on Bloody Nine. He comes over with the soul ramp, but after buying back moves here with a blink as well as the dragon tail, they've got the blood right down, but the decrepify should help this undying survive. They do also hold on to that Aegis. Yeah, that looked like it could it potentially be a little bit promising. That kick uh, onto the Viper put Gunner himself in a horrible position. So they kind of just traded lives and the Tombstone stayed up for quite a while with the Decrepify, but just not enough in the tank, just not enough, not good enough positioning from them. They have to use the entire Rolling Thunder just to kill the Tusk. And then the amount of teamfight they have left when the Tombstone falls is pretty minuscule. If that wasn't a 14k lead fight, who knows? But if you want to be able to pull this back, you have to out-execute. It's not enough that you just place defensive spells and, and kind of punch back. You need to take initiative, you need to get the first pick, ideally, and then go from there, and just hasn't really been the case for Dog Champ. Feels like every fight is reactive. Oh, uh, that was a weird choice from Gunner. I don't know what the plan was. I think he was expecting the rupture, but didn't realize that Coast of Bila didn't have the mana for it. Well, might still want to kick him toward his own team regardless, I think, but, you know, maybe he was doing it for the style points, maybe they're having a little fun, I don't know. How dare they? Fun unacceptable. No fun allowed? No fun allowed, well, I more zoomers are not allowing the dog champ team to have a lot of fun, but as long as they have it themselves, it's okay. Well, finally a tower here mid, Pugna. Generally not a good look to get the mid tarman at 27 with Pugna in your team, and, well, you also died after. But hey, at least they kicked the corpse, so that looked cool. The corpse of the skeleton. It, it really does feel bad to get not only knocked out, but kicked out as a corpse. Just he's dead already. You can cut him some slack, please. The, the lead does just continue to extend. 16,000 net worth lead for four Zoomers. It, it had gotten back to 7k, but immediately back it to 12k, where it's a bit of the decision making that has kind of cost Dog Champ here and has led to them falling further and further behind. In this series, it definitely feels like there's just a class difference and probably a bit amplified as well by just the matchup itself. Uh, I think Dog Champ as a team in this tournament have played better on average than they do today. Um, could be mental, could be play style from the enemy team, whatever it is. But you heard it in the pregame interviews that Yarin was like, every time we play this team, we get stomped. And Husky was like, yeah, when we when we went into this season, we thought Dog Champ was going to be the weakest team of the region. They've impressed a bit against other teams, so we can definitely lose. But you know what? I, I'm not seeing the loss right now in any of the games. It's been pretty smooth sailing for them. It's been easy, to be honest, both times. Now, uh, do you think that that 
attitude kind of psychs them out in this game or in this series even just being like oh yeah they beat us every time like we just can't find a way to beat them are you already psyching yourself out uh potentially i think i think part of it might be hesitation like you're over expecting your opponent or uh you're not drafting what you usually run i, I think in this case this is something more standard for dog champ than it was in game number one but mm -hmm. either way the, it's it's a pacing thing in both games for me. Like, four zoomers are the ones making the moves and taking the initiative every time. That TP is just Ooh, not going to happen, I annihilate. <laughs> and, <laughs> tried yeah. it, but Gunner's right there. Ready to go. Kick the corpse. Drink your blood. For fun. Any fun game in Dota. And for bonus points. Bonus points are like the points in whose line is it anyway. You can get them, but they don't count. Uh -oh. Right now, Dog Champ, ooh, bloody nine, getting caught. Tombstone down, but Stone Bank is here. Z Freak, though, with enough space to escape this wall. In fact, Yarn is going down uh, to Gunner, and then he walks okay. back in. Maybe buying time for this to happen, though. Z Freak tactical. BKB comes out from Stone Bank, standing his ground for now, but there's the kick away from the team and into the Fiend's grip. It's a bit of an alley oop there. Avalanche comes in, BKB no longer existing for Stonebank, but now he's gone to the Shadow Blade. Snowball to follow it up. They've got the Walrus Punch, and they'll get the Walrus Kick out, and they will use that Mirko Krokob technique to take him out of this game. I feel like half the kicks are counterproductive, actually. Just kicking him away from the team when he's gripped. So like three or four of the seconds of that feed script are you spent just chasing, chasing the ball. I mean, they still get it done, right? But yeah, just uh, maybe a bit of miscommunication. I don't know what it is. Or again, just messing around a little bit. They still get the job done, but that took quite a while, more than it had to. Costabile in the meantime was pushing mid, but started hesitating a bit once Radiant Hero started showing up. So didn't really get too much tower damage in, but now that they connect with Dragonite and a dead Tiny, this could lead to a lane of barracks if Dogchamp aren't careful. Muzim's very confident. Okay. Ooh, gunner in again. That'll There's do. The punch and the kick. Snowball to follow it up and goodbye, Bloody Knight. It's running out of lives. Bloody Nine now just Bloody Three. Bloody dead for a minute. Because that was a dieback, so. Well, four zoomers are not going to try to press the issue just yet, so maybe waiting for next Roche. Early respawn time is 30 seconds, so they're well aware of that. Take control of the tri enemy triangle area, ward up the high grounds perhaps, and just sit here. Uh, you've got some insane advantage from by virtue of having a Weaver with BKB as well. You were talking about ZinQ going carry builds. I feel like this is very uncharacteristic itemization from Z-Freak going BKB on his four Weaver instead of Ags or, you know, some sort of utility item for the team. He's actually just building into being able to go in for himself, throw out the bugs and get to work. Yeah, Swarm upgrade with the shard and the Geminate attack, of course, going to the BKB. It's certainly less for your team and like you said, more for yourself. So we'll see how Z Freak will utilize that as the Swarm comes over, the Walrus punches out. I Annihilate has been caught again. And again, one of those kicks that <laughs> Puts him further away from the team. It's like, I'm kicking him to you, Moo. I'm blinking on him, dude. <laughs> well, no matter. Viper was out completely on his own. Just seems a little bit either. I don't know if you want to call it careless or hopeless in the way that they're playing, but just getting picked off one by one quite a lot. Uh, running into four Zoomers wards, not connecting on a smoke and, and taking the initiative. So I still... Still would like to see a little bit more from Dog Champs to just, you know, just go for it, you know? Take a risk, try to make something happen as a team. There is a bit of a risk here, uh, but Luki is alone doing this. The team isn't connecting yeah, until he's, now. And he's getting a kick while he's ruptured. Yeah, well. Oh boy, yeah, Stone Bank goes down. He's got no buyback, 77 seconds. Got and uh, well, yep, there's the kick again. Stop that TP. This time to the team. That was the most impressive one. Just out of out of all the moments you could have chosen to go for the panga roll, he did it on his own with a dead viper in the fountain. It, it just it doesn't check out with 
you know, they're not really playing around each other too much here. That roll in itself could have been really interesting if Viper was alive, there was a Tombstone and a Tiny coming in in Shadowblade, right? But it, it, it's it's not very coordinated, not very cohesive as a team. And four Zoomers on the flip side are just, you know, they keep playing together. They're playing tight. Uh, not necessarily by being five heroes in the same place, but they're playing around a shared understanding of what the next move is and what the goal of the game is. So when Z-Freak is in his own triangle scouting out heroes, they take advantage of that somewhere else on the map and get something done. Or they connect with him and kill the Tiny like they did earlier, right? It's those kind of things where Dogchamp just aren't setting it up for themselves. Um, it's easy to say now. Like, you're 25k behind now. Now the game is in Doom territory. Um, but there were, there were opportunities earlier you could have tried to pursue to, to bring it to Zoomers. This Roche is mega dead. This goes really fast with Bloodseeker plus tag team. No problem. Maybe Gunner for the uh, for the shark. Yeah. There's that kick. You do a backflip. Those are style points. <laughs> and hits the landing. That that's a ten. Yep. And his grand reward was getting killed off instantly. That's a uh, <laughs> wonderful. Uh oh, Loki. Uh, no. Here it is again. Well, blink and you'll miss it. There's the shard. Gunner got the one from Roche, I guess. And they're coming out to buy it. TPing in. They've got the Fiend's Grip out on a stone bank and the right clicks through from Costa BLA to try and get this kill out of the Tiny and try they will and succeed they do as they will finish off the Tiny for 80 seconds and then the kick again right over to Moo. That'll line up this Pugna for a Dragon Tail and another death. And Moo with the Black Dragon form will fly up to the high ground, take out the Tombstone, and that's it. They've had enough. Yeah, they'll call GG. They've been beaten to a pulp for 20 minutes. And now there was nothing left in the tank from Dog Champ. Just, just not their day, really. Not their matchup. Not the team they like to play against.